Hello and welcome back to Deadfire. We are in the uh, Council of the Pirates and, well, we've got a little bit more exploring to do here in Bayfield Tower. Sure. Our Bale Fire Tower. And then we've got to explore one last place here and head out and figure out where we're going. I think we're going back to Nekataka, but we will have to see. There are a couple different things we need to do in Nekataka currently, I think. I don't know. Depends how long all of this takes. I have no idea what else is here. Uh, so all of this is stealing. You look at cages. Rust and blood tinges this iron cage in shades of ochre. Okay, what about over here? We got on this one. Gusts of wind rise from below with the smell of the beacon's fires. Okay, and this one with all the uh, bones in it. Bird droppings crust over the iron bands of this cage. All right. Well, I guess we'll be coming here later. Probably. Uh, yeah, I re imagine that's going to be the uh, place. I, we could probably talk to. I, I think we're probably going to talk to Ferrante out out there at some point. That's my theory so far. Radiant Court. Now, this is where there's going to be merchants, and we're also warned about coming here, so we'll see how that goes. But merchants are good. We actually have money to spend, so that's good. Is a regular ship hunter's ship Ooh, hunter. these are these are free. Aye. Nice, we'll have Anyone them. who kills that many Valene trading bots is a right hero of mine. Hmm, okay, so there's talking between each other over there. Who is Berna? I imagine she's a shop. Fresh fruit, vegetables, dried goods for long voyages. I got it all right here. What can I stock you up with today? Well, let's see. She has exactly what she just shouted, except that most of these... Wait, what's this one? This is the palm stone. Huh. Oh, they... they oh, they cause... Uh, oh, yes, this is the person we need to speak to for another quest. I didn't even realize it. We'll grab that. What's roe? Eggs from fish or crabs can be eaten by the spoonful. Hmm. Okay. No, I think that's all we want from her, actually. That's fine. Was she even the one we need to speak to? Let's have a look at this. So this was... Uh, I assumed it was one of these, but I guess it's not. Must be like a quest? Uh, maybe a task? Iron Gut. There we go. Speak to Rosanella. Uh, okay, she's getting a concoction that might clear his gut. But we found a, pa a palm stone that might do the same thing. Huh. There she is. Oh, and there's a little uh, statue with a pirate hat on it. So you're the captain the old port's been talking about. Aye, you do look like a fearsome salt. Welcome to Dunnage. She slaps a hand onto the bar top with a hearty laugh. What are you having? I'll pour you a double. What do you know about the floating hangman? Her eyes go wide and she fumbles a bottle of spirits, spilling rum all over the counter. No one survives the floating hangman. Or so they say. It's the ship of the dead. You spy it on the horizon. You flee as fast as you can. Uh, Petro uh, sent me to you. Ah, I guess the last concoction I made for him didn't do the trick then. Poor bastard. There's one last tincture recipe I know that won't kill him. Probably. It's called Andra's Bile, but I don't have all the ingredients in stock. You'll need a rotten agfish, an unripened palm stone, and a vial of fire kelp extract. Have him mix it all with a half tankard of grog and, well... Hope for the best. Okay, why didn't you try this earlier? I did tell you the list of ingredients, eh? He'll have stuff dribbling out of both ends for a week. Maybe two, if he's really unlucky. Why do I need to get a rotten hagfish and not a regular hagfish? The goal is to make him vomit, remember? A rotting hagfish produces a special oil once it reaches a certain level of decay. Okay, where can I find these ingredients? Check the barrels around Lifter's Refuse for the rotten hagfish. You might be able to find unripened palm stone for sale somewhere in Radiant Court. She pours a drink, but rather than passing it to her patron, she downs it herself. Parker in the King's Coffin usually keeps some fire kelp extract on hand for special purposes. Be careful when dealing with that one. Parker in King's Coffin. Okay, show me what you got. All right, so she just sells alcohol. That's hey fine. Where's Lifter's Refuge? Oh, I can't see the city. Leave it to me. Here. Looking for work? I've got coin and a few scores to settle. Bounties? Oh, please, yes. You carry yourself like a person well acquainted with violence. 
Care to put your skills to use for a good cause? And some coin? Of course. Hmm? She dances a coin across her knuckles, mirth a bright glint in her eyes. Well, tell me about the cause you mentioned. It's simple enough. The firebrand commanded by Captain Henkwa once plagued the dead fire. The skill and brutality of Henkwa's crew was the stuff of legends. Desirel flicks the coin she's holding and snatches it from the air with a grin. Up close, it's clearly a Solonet. Legendary nightmares, more like. After how they did the crew with a virtuous reward. Even that bastard Benwith wanted nothing to do with them. But pirate legends don't live long. Some months ago, an alliance of Neketaka pirate hunters managed to corner the Firebrand and sink her off the coast of Tikawara. They confirmed Captain Henkwa's death, but her senior crew members escaped unscathed. And now it seems like bringing the Firebrand's crew to justice doesn't matter to anyone but me. Even in the low light, you can see a vein throbbing at her temple. Her voice drops to a low growl. So I want you to kill them. And I'll pay you out of my own pocket if you do. Sounds like you got a grudge against them. It's nothing personal. The crew earned their reputation through murder and thievery, and it would make me sick to see them regain an ounce of their power. She tries for a nonchalant shrug. It comes off looking like she's got a sore shoulder instead. As she speaks, Desirel removes a small solonet from her pocket and polishes the surface with a corner of her shirt. Her features soften like she's visiting an old memory, then she stuffs the coin back in her pocket with barely, with a barely audible sigh. What's bothering you? There's no need to make my concerns your own, my friend. It's family business, that's all. But I suppose you have a right to know. She pauses and slips the silhouette from her pocket again. It gleams golden in the low light. My idiot kid sister was on the firebrand, seduced to a dishonest life by the promise of adventure. When the pirate hunters killed the crew and sank the ship, they also killed my sister. But those irredeemable lowlifes I sent you after got away without a scrape. I want them to pay. I don't much care how, so long as they take their turn on the wheel. I'll hunt down those pirates. Who am I looking for? The Firebrand had a mascot. A useless little bastard, who's taken to calling himself Lord Admiral Imp. He's not terribly dangerous on his own, but he's keen to make a nuisance of himself wherever he goes. She rubs the bridge for a nose and sighs. Last I heard, Lord Admiral Imp was making himself comfortable in Queen's birth. You'll find him there with a few zarups and constructs, the little buggers convinced to follow him. Bless their simple hearts. Noted. Next. You'll be taking down Lady Ipiro, Captain Henkwa's former first mate and rumoured lover. She's a cipher, and a dangerous one at that. Ipiro maintains an estate in Serpent's Crown in Neketaka. But I wouldn't recommend you rush in Marzo's blasting and swords held high. She keeps a number of bodyguards on her payroll. He winks, all smiles. I'll be careful. Who else am I after? You'll be going after Katren, the Firebrand's resident wizard. Rumor has it she was once an apprentice to Arkemir before turning pirate. Last I heard, Katren and her sundry little minions could be found lazing about the sacred stair here in Neketaka at night. No idea where she disappears off to during the day. And the last target? I have a challenge for you, my friend. And his name is Torkar, leader of the Firebrand's boarding parties. He's an ogre with a reputation for cleverness and cruelty both. I've even heard tell it was Torkar who was behind the Firebrand's most successful tactics, not Henkwa. Torkar was last seen at Lifter's refuge here in Dunwich, dead set on joining a crew or assembling his own. I trust you won't let that happen. He cocks one dark eyebrow in, fair in question. Farewell. Happy hunting. He nods and gives you a showy wink. Oh, we can do that. A level up for a seraphim. Oh, well. Sleight of hand goes up to an eight. Uh, we'll grab him a metaphysics up to a seven. And here we get one more spell. This integrates pretty awesome. Is there anything else we want at a lower level? This level we pretty much only have burn. Is there anything else that would be useful? Puppet Master? 
Potentially. Potentially. Um, I don't know. Mental Link's an ally which spreads damage between them. Potentially. Frightening and sickening enemies could be useful. Stops them being able to use hostile abilities. Potentially that's the right way to go. We could just think, well that's the penetration with his weapon. Mm, we're not really that interested. Yeah, let's go with this one. Let's go with the Frighten. It gives him a little bit extra he can do with that. And then here, uh, he's already very good at blunderbusses. Um, I guess we'll just get him another one of these. Yeah, sure. Don't really need him using melee weapons. Blunderbusses are fine. Right. Right here. Uh, and Be let's right there. continue exploring. Go up this way. Andra's gills! There's no hope. Hello. That was a disaster of epic proportions, if ever I directed one. Arms flailing wildly before her, the stage performer shoes the other actors from the set. A typhoon couldn't have cleared out our audience faster. What's wrong? What's wrong? I'll tell you what, everything. My troops coming apart at the seams. We're short on cash, we're low on people, and we've run plumb dry on enthusiasm. She takes the points on her fingers. We haven't drawn a decent crowd in more than a fortnight. And it ain't like pirates are hard to please. That's how you know the show really stinks. But I think I know what the problem is. We've got a lack of flair. Oh, if only I could hire more talented performers. I just know my play would take off. What's your play about? Only the biggest thing to hit the dead fire since the Valian Trading Company started hunting us like sea hounds. I'm talking about Aethus storming through the archipelago and capsizing nearly a whole fleet of our ships. What would you need to improve the play? A better Aethus, for one. I'm the tallest one in our troop. I'm still not very convincing, even when I bother to dye my skin blue. Also, our special stage effects aren't all that special anymore. We had someone for that role, but she got herself into debt and has a new job at the King's Coffin. Ah, I think I know who you're talking about. I'll help you. Really? Well, that's great. Then we could... Abruptly, her eyes narrow, her dark brows furrowing with heavy suspicion. Wait a tick. Why would you help me? What do you get out of this? Well, I really want to see the play. With you helping me acquire the right talent, I'd wager it's going to be phenomenal. I'm in desperate need of two more performers, a wizard for one, plus any oaf big enough to pose as Aethus. I happen to know a wizard of the finest skill set who already performs here in Dunwich, Tiana, at the King's Coffin. But unfortunately, I got no idea of where we might find a suitable Aethus. Get me the right people for the parts, and I promise you'll be pleased with your investment. I'll turn us a profit or die trying. Hmm, okay. Potentially a job for the blind man, but I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know if he was big or not. Anyway. Two pirates. Oh, we can take stuff here. We'll My old captain do that. was a drinker from the day he was born to the day he died. I'm telling you, ask for Irwina Always in the king's coffin. He was rail she make you thin. see stars. He wound you half-masted sot. She's got to be 90 years old. Fever. We Sunrise. have hemp here. Hemp gives us constitution and a bonus to fortitude. Whoa, doves. The coming horizon is a sea size. You're just going to keep going, huh? All right, good. Hello, Ramasso. Welcome to my emporium. Whatever you need, I sell. He gestures at all the stalls around him. Uh, what would you like to buy today? You own all these stalls? I do now. <laughs> I started out with only one stall and eventually branched out, buying out my competitors one by one. Well, let's see what you got. Okay, so we have Pale Hide, which is a legendary light armor. Huge armor rating for light armor. Okay. Makes hits convert to grazes. Really, really good. Pretty much no negative there. Many creatures have unwittingly contributed their pelts and bones to this armor. Each component is faded, as though treated with lime, eventually becoming the same uh, bone white color. The cause of this transformation is unknown. Whatever bestial enchantments uh, lie lies upon the uh, pale hide also affects the demeanor of the wearer. While clad in a grisly totem, one's mind begins to drift towards grand hunts under the moonlit sky. 
the glorious struggle of tooth and claw, and the undeniable ecstasy of the kill. Interesting. The eager blade. Okay, two-handed estoc. Uh, okay, that's pretty good damage. Scoring a critical hit grants plus two accuracy and five percent action speed. Okay, and scoring a, crit a hit on a near-death target also damages nearby enemies. This Estoc was once the personal weapon of legendary Dear Wooden Knight, Lady Call. As Field Marshal of a border barony, she was responsible for defending the vassals of the land from roving bands of independent hill people who frequently crossed into the Deerwood Pillage. She was a tireless warrior and a canny commander. She waged a decade-long campaign against all manners of brigands and marauders. When she was killed during a retaliatory attack on an enemy stronghold, her officer Kadra recovered her weapon and sent it to the Duke of the Deerwood, with a letter informing him of the passing of his tireless servant. A fragment of Lady Call's soul purportedly remains within Estoc's pommel, eager to lend um, aid in battle once again. The blade almost seems to hum with barely constrained longing to join in righteous combat. Nice. Not good, but not, I mean, it's alright. It's not better than anything else we've found so far. Hale Hyde seems amazing. Yeah. Okay, compared to ours, is absolutely amazing. Hmm. I put Pale Hide down as something to come back to. We don't quite have enough to commit to that right now. And I don't... Well, I don't want it enough to commit to it. Uh, where is our note? Oh, there they are. There, there are our notes. Uh, we're gonna have... Pale... Hide... Light... Arm... Armor... Dunnage... There we go. Perfect. Um, what we got here? Shelf contains a uh, navigation. They sail chart. on their gilded brigs. Oh come on! And they wail to us. Put down That's anchor, better. breed, and don't loot so much. But um, when should we lock? Move past where it. and how? The first thing you notice about the man is the nature of his attire. Loud and clashing reds and purples, bright as a peacock. On second glance, you'll see that he's tall and lanky, boyishly handsome in an unkempt way, with a trim beard and a friendly smile. He hums a little tune to himself as he watches the passers-by. My good sir, hello! He gives you a frightfully cheery wave and beckons you closer. Whatever might I do for you? Tell me about yourself. I'm certain there's no need to tell you, observant as you no doubt are, that I am... An actor. He says the last bit with a flourish and takes an extravag extravagant bow. Stage, tavern, street corner. They are as much my home as where I lay my head at night. So, I travel Aora, looking for opportunities to share my gifts with the grateful masses, wherever that may lead me. You make a lot of money doing that? Oh, goodness, yes, loads of it. I've been known to joke that I'm less a man than I am a walking bank. For all the coin that I carry. The common folk do so love an actor. We bring mystery and excitement to their otherwise dreary lives. Yes, you could say we're doing the gods' work. As he speaks, you notice the toes of his soft boots are worn thin. A closer inspection reveals that his robes are unraveling at the hems and are well patched at the elbows too. You're broke, aren't you? How dare you! But you're not wrong, to my great chagrin. Times have been tough of late, what with the giant statues smashing up the place, and few in the dead fire have coin to spare besides. It's quite difficult, you know, living as I do. On occasion, foolish folk will take my act for reality. I've thrice been run out of a town for impersonating a foreign dignitary. Damn fools don't understand the blistering wit of my satire, I tell you. I had to learn to protect myself as a result, though I must admit, what martial skills I've got aren't of use for much more than fighting off wolves or throttling a thief with designs on my satchel. Thank the gods, I hardly ever need to use them. I could talk myself out of nearly anything, you know. You sure can talk, I'll give you that. Well, thank you. I must say it's gratifying to be recognized for one's talents. All things being equal, I'd much rather recite a sonnet than swing an axe, but a man's got to make his way in the world any way he can. Can you teach me what you've learned in your travels as a performer? I would be honored. 
But a man needs to make a living, you know. So, for my services, how about 3,000 copper? Here you are. Fantastic! Let's get to it, then. His training is idiosyncratic. He starts by describing a character he'd like you to play. A street tough, an embittered, uh, embittered soldier, a noble in the throes of a tantrum. Then he recites lines to you, acting that you... Asking that you act, recite them back in the attitude of your character. He then shows you how to use those characters to trick people into giving you what you want. When you show him you've got it, he gives you a wide smile and bids you farewell. We have learned his training. Drink nice. small doves, and you right. may so grab rock, that. Sinking grab a that one. Or as last ship. Three. Oh, can I ask her to go and? Oh, I can't take those because we already have full. Uh, repair oh, supplies before the burning. This one. We'll have that. Nice. The morning is a blight. Love some. The I'm morrow go is a. Oh, okay. Now I can hear myself think again. He is really loud. Say the gentleman of leisure loves his ship hunters. That just said there. Okay, who are you? Dimmeza. Welcome to the treasure trove, sailor. The strapping god light blinks between the swollen, crusty tumors lining her eyes. Her lips crack, weeping a sappy substance as she speaks. Anything in my trove catches your eye, you let me know. All right. Let's see what we have for sale. Oh, wow. She actually has quite a lot for sale. Ooh. Sun and moon. There's a legendary flail. Doesn't do a lot of damage. That's actually really low damage. Oh, right. No, but it does have reduced damage. I see. Um, so, she, it has low damage, raises are converted to hits though, and it hits twice, sun adds 25% burn damage, moon adds 25% freeze damage, and it grants celestial attunement day and celestial attunement night. During the day, it, it, it receives increases the power level of fire attacks, and this one increases the power level for frost attacks. The glowing flail was blessed in the solar eclipse by Glenfathen apostate priest Ellis Marin. The Ellis believed that the Aethys and Andra were not two separate entities, but rather two aspects of a single god. He considered the eclipse, the embrace of the sun and moon, to be the ultimate expression of this fact. Furthermore, he preached against the very existence of any other gods. At the height of the eclipse, uh, the apostate raised his flail to the heavens and blessed it in the name of the one unified god. At that moment, his eyes burned and he was instantly struck blind. The weapon was indeed imbued with power, but sacrifice for this blessing was steep. Some of Lewis's followers were convinced it was proof of the truthfulness of his claims, while others saw it as nothing more than divine punishment for his blasphemies. Okay. Squid's grasp? Oh, no, 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 dude. Oh, it's at the bottom now, right? Yeah. I didn't want to buy it. Uh, so it doesn't do that much. It's a one-handed rapier. Cannot be flanked. It's lovely. Grant Squid's Escape, so it gives you an, an escape, and then blinds and confuses nearby enemies, and then Kalmo's Curse. Major defense penalties to nearby allies. So you're kind of meant to run in alone with that one, I guess? Weird. This unusual rapier was once the signature weapon of a widely feared captain of the Principe, known for pursuing his targets to the end of the archipelago for his ability to evade the most determined pirate hunters of the Royal Deadfire Company. As though Calmo was a man of cruel horror and dogged determination. The captain of the Red Sailed Sloop, Zorono's Mercy, his own crew feared, feared him as much as his foes, as Azio was like, as likely to inflict his sadistic punishments on underperforming underlings as the victims of his piracy. He survived four separate mutiny attempts, each time reversing the circumstances of an ambush and miraculously coming out on top. Legend spread of the wicked pirate captain with the eyes in the back of his head, Phenomenal reflexes and a rapier, the colour of ink made entirely of Emirin steel. Okay, iridescent scale. Not very expensive compared to the rest. That seems like very solid armour. It is very solid armour. The Master Alchemist Donald Vinzetto. Vin that's Vin Vincetti? Uh or Vin yeah, Vincetti. Created this suit of gleaming scale armor, not as a tool for battle, but as an expression of his craft. Untrained in the arcane art of enchantment, Vincetti sought to create a perfect elemental defense using only alchemical techniques. He labored over every scale, every stitch, and every rivet, distilling protective elemental essence into every compartment, a component. 
The project consumed his every waking hour for nearly a year. The results, while more than satisfactory, never seemed to please the alchemist. His masterpiece was functional, but far from perfect. He grew discouraged and eventually discarded the armor, declaring it the culmination of his failure at his craft. Okay. Void Ward? Oh, okay. Um, it decreases the amount of raw damage taken and increases your corrode armor. The ring was created in secret by a rival of the Animats who, formed the, who forged the great sword Void Wheel. The rival intended to steal the weapon upon the Animats' inevitable death. This ring would serve to protect him from the sword's terrible powers. Ooh, okay. We will find that sword at some point. Mirror back. Kind of alright. Yeah, it's like deflection against ranged weapon tends to reflect spells, some stealth. Yeah, interesting. Sewn into the hem of this reflective cloak is a brittle, well-worn scroll flushed, uh, squashed flat. Unrolling it reveals this letter penned in several hands, seemingly passed around uh, among the great thieves of Eora. A gift for you, my friend, made from the gold-plated maniacs of the living lands. May your feet to be swift and fingers nimble, and your drinks always be on the house. From Antonio of Beagpe, or Beagetti, Beagepi, uh, addressed to the unnamed fief in the Valian Republics. Here, Twitch, but I think we talked about. Take me a seat at the bar. An unnamed thief in a letter to Nifer, uh, a thief of the deer wood. I can't let a treasure like this fall into house do nothing well's hands. So it's yours as long as you can keep it. Follow your heart and don't get dead. Lefer, in uh, Nifer, in a letter to one. Langdon, most recently of Defiance Bay. Oh, I wonder if we met Langdon. Like, I don't know. Uh, Revecu's Stained Grafts. Only, the only thing it does is grant death denied. Where is immune to constitution afflictions when they carry one or more injuries? Immune. Okay, not just resistant. Completely immune. Interesting. Gauntlets once belonged to a Juana Barbarian known throughout the archipelago as Refku, of Rekvu, Red of Invaders. Local legends hold that Rekvu appeared only when his forces situation was at its most dire. Rekvu often sustained injuries in battle that would have killed any other warrior, yet she never died. In the heat of one such battle, Rekvu charged uh, the field alone against a troop of bleak walkers, for all those who might have fought beside her sprawled, uh, sprawled dead at her feet. She slew the paladins one by one until, at last, she stood before their leader. The paladin leader was fast, even faster than Rekfu, and severed her hand with a swipe of his broadsword. But Rekfu was clever, and she tripped the paladin leader. He fell into the mud, she cleaved him from neck to navel. Assured that her enemy was dead, Rekfu tore off her other gauntlet and used it as a glove, uh, and used its glove as a makeshift tourniquet. When the uh, battle was ended, and her wound tended to, Rekfu left her stained gauntlets behind. I see. Well, they're all kind of trash, if I'm honest with you. Uh, an unholy... Let's say, if an unholy fog rolls in, you... Oh, you feel, it's just telling me about the hangman. Despite appearances, the sacks of luminous adder contain only brightly coloured sand. Gilded armour is ceremonial nature and no use in real battle. Okay. And what have we got here? All paintings perfect uh, for captains with drab cabins. Right here. Okay. Nothing really that amazing there. Alright. So we pretty much explored all of this. Uh, I worry about you, Adair. There'd be a finger free out here that you shouldn't be aiming a pet. Hey, it was dark. I only saw the back of your head. I thought you were some huge island squirrel. This ain't about me, farmer. <laughs> right. Head out. Uh, Lifter's Refuge. We have to get some um, raw... So, sorry, not some raw food rotten food and convince the blind man to go and join the play I think see if we can do that hello have a pity and toss me a pyre will you how would you feel about playing the part of Aethys on stage what I'm no actor and besides I can't barely see nothing as it is believe me you're perfect for the role you really think so? He raises his chin up, tilting his face side to side as if examining himself in a non-existent mirror. Maybe I do have a mug made for the stage. I sure got the voice for it, eh? Turn me in the right direction, and I'll make me way to the Radiant Court. Perfect. That was easy enough. We already knew who to talk to. Oh, there's Torker. 
Oh, we need to beat him up. Well, kill him. Okay. Oh, is he still trying to find his way? Is he? Bl it's because he's blind. He's like, which way do I go? Stage is this way, ain't it? It is. Yes. Yeah. Good. Good. Right. Uh, let's get ourselves nicely put out there. Is that really my formation? Seems bad. Uh, wait. Oh, I select them all, and then yeah. Yeah, it should be that. That way? I trust you. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Puny. Too puny to join my crew. Arms crossed, the hulking ogre looks at you from head to toe. He spits at your feet, unimpressed. Go away. Be gone. Scram. What's an ogre doing in Dunage? As I said, I seek bodies for a crew. And no, you cannot join. There's a bounty on you. It is kind of you to announce yourself to me, Bounty Hunter. It will be just as kind of you to die by my hand. Alright. Well, he's going straight for Edir, which is why we want Edir in the center. Knock him over. That's our first move. Zoti, we're going to drop uh, her... Oh, we have to wait a second. There we go. Now we're in combat. We can actually use all of her abilities. Um, let's do the accuracy might buff debuff stuff. Send Palagina in. Well, we'll send her in round the side. Uh, we'll get Seraphin to potentially... Well, he could try frightening a bunch of them around the ogre. Uh, I cancelled that, didn't I? Yep, frighten a bunch around the ogre. And then we'll get ourselves to take a shot at this guy. And let's just... Uh, Let's hit him with Pierce the Bell. Lost the lap. Feels like oh, there's a whole bunch coming from behind us. Through okay, that's not great. Um, get Consecrated Ground going. We're going to have to switch to our dagger and very much uh, turn around. Uh, I might. I don't want to empower anything just yet. Hit, hit the Wolf Companion with a blind. Right. Um, it's fine. Did we convert anybody? No, we were using the Frightening, of course. Uh, convert that Wolf Companion back there. It's fine. Palagina, where did I send? I sent her back this way. Fine. Anybody in... Um... No, oh, only that guy's frightened. Okay. Oh, no, but that guy in the Cutthroat Marauder. Okay, I'm going to try her Blinding hit. Um, I may actually empower that. There we go. Three, two, one, and on pause. Oh, let's see. Let's go slow mode. Okay. See you, mass. We blinded that one. Uh, we should now blind the next one along as well. Consecrated grounds on. Let's use holy radiance to get that going. Oh, the charm worked. Fantastic. Wait, who am I clicked on right now? Like, no, holy radiance. Seraphin, turn back to the fight. We are gonna instead switch to uh, just a normal attack on this Show wolf companion. It's done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Palagina's pretty low. She's still casting her spell though. Now, I think she needs to lay on hands herself. Right. And that's how it's done. We're doing <laughs> okay. Eddie, you're gonna knock over this guy. Oh, wait, is this guy range? He is ranged. Can we drag him in? He's in range, so let's grab him. Nice. Like flogging a figure. We're gonna get that companion. Uh, we don't need to use anything else. That's yeah. fine. Still healing. Alagina, let's use her self. Let's use her athletics heal. And get the animal companion. Nice. Okay. Uh, I think we're gonna shadow step over there. They are gonna turn on us, which is unfortunate. Try the paralysis on the main guy. That might work. Not a high chance of success, but that's fine. Alagina doing okay? He can survive. She's really doing her job, which is what I'm looking for. Use inspired beacon again. 
Or we could just lay on hands ourselves, which might be a better way of uh, handling things. That looks like it hurt. Nice. We can now get behind here. And hit, keep hitting him. That's nice. We're flanking him. That's gonna leave a scar. That should do pretty well. We're very low on health. Might be time for a heal. Oh, we got a second. Medico. Um. Okay. Let's try the blind again. It might work. This guy's barely harmed, which is fine. Uh, oh, she's still immobilized. I see. So she's been doing nothing this whole fight so far. Um, restore on. Well, we don't really need a restore right now. Let's get her. Divine Mark. Lowers the deflection, which might be useful. It won't hit though. That's the problem. Hmm. I don't know what we're gonna do if we can't actually move here. Chuck one of those in there. Not got a high chance of success, but we'll chuck one of those in there anyway. Up I this need way. to try something else. I'll take. Feels nice. Oh, 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 we've been immobilized. Okay. Not great. Um, I'm gonna head back Sing. up here with Seraphim. We can clear out a space here. We might be good. Charm fell off. Okay, that's why I want to head Seraphim back here. Uh, although he does need to just attack, I think. Right, uh, Charm's back. Get the wolf. <coughs> nice. Okay. We're fairly low. I'm gonna use mirror images and send Seraphim around to help with this one. That's fine. Yeah. I need. Uh oh, she Palagina's almost dead. Uh she needs to self-heal. Lay on hands on herself, I guess. He might go down, no. Uh we do have a restore we could drop down as well. I'll try and drop that down Healy. in time. Nice, he's healed. We still immobilized? We're still immobilized, my god. Uh heal again directly afterwards then. Right. Head over here. Wait, who, do, who am I? I'm not even clicked on it. Oh, we, we're immobilized. Uh, bow and arrow. And shoot this guy. I'll teach you a lesson! Alright, run right in here. Get the sharpshooter. Okay, okay, okay. So we could convert the sharpshooter. We don't necessarily need to. Um, the heals are going okay. Halogena, anything that we need her to do? Probably just heal again. That seems sensible. He's not really doing very much but staying alive, but that's okay. We are clearing them out at this side of the map. Bullseye. Which is okay. Okay, Eddie is still, like, unharmed in this fight. Um, try and knock him down. As he try an empowered knock. We, oh, we could empower one of our one-time rest moves. Do a bunch of crush damage. Oh, we can, actually. Let's empower our knockdown. Nice, that worked. We're no longer immobilized, but we're going to stay at range There's with our bow and arrow. To be able to take that one out. Halogena's a little bit weak. We're going to use constant recovery on her okay. now. That should help out a little bit with the healing. Okay. Oh, Zoti's now close enough that she can actually do stuff. Uh, let's use her wounds. Didn't work. Nice, okay. Uh, I'm going to send us up here onto the ridge where he was. I'm going to send Seraphin down. Okay. We can shoot down at Torker now. I think is our next target. Uh, we could use this. Uh, projectiles bounce. Or we can just attack. Yeah, let's just attack. Although, actually, we have more abilities we could use, potentially. Uh, we could use Pain Block. Might help. Probably won't. Uh, we could try frightening a bunch of the back. So they won't attack. God, that were a bit That's good. That's good. A bunch of sickens, a bunch of uh, frightens. They, that just means that we've got people who aren't attacking for a while. Really our objective. <laughs> Worker's trying to heal. Gotta have something here that works. No pen on that one, which is unfortunate. He's still got constant healing on. Seraphin, when we got pain block, it's going to be a good time for that. 
Although we don't have pain block right away. Maybe I just need to convert like See the combat harder. Nice. That was a good bit of damage we got down there straight away. Uh, okay. Let's just try our powerful crush damage attack. Even though it's not so good on him. Uh, and we'll use our kick. Show him how it Nice, okay, didn't really do anything, but nice anyway. Try and knock him down. Uh, does our kick do anything extra in terms of damage? Uh, things behind it get hit. Uh, let's just use the speed up. That hardly seems fake. Uh, oh, hit the crush damage on him. I'll probably be it. Come now, step into the light. Mm, I'm gonna switch her over to getting the constitution bonus. Nice, okay. Got anything from Seraphin? He's got some points. Uh, Lord of the Flight, he's got sword Did that work? No. No, it did not. We could go down there and try and drop a heal. I think I will. Rebirth awaits me. Come on. <laughs> There's something you don't see every day. Yep, kept her up. Okay, uh, consecrated ground again. We're gonna keep. Oh, wait, actually, I'm gonna hit that combat marauder who's low in health. Like flogging a figurehead. Try and get them Futile. out of the way. I'll teach you! <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're far enough away that this should be okay. Okay. Not quite. <laughs> we got him. Okay. Uh, Wolf Companion next. Of Seraphin. He has 108. We could just try raw damage See on Torker. It's probably the best way of doing this. Yeah. Just failed? Oh, damn. Pain block is okay, but we don't need that. Uh, we could try and steal an armor rating off of someone, but that doesn't seem necessary right now. Mm, I guess I want dominate probably. And that's how it's done. Eddier can heal this now, I think. Yeah, if I get Eddier to use his heal, that'll work. Are we attacking the wolf companion? I think we are. Yeah. Like flogging a figurehead. Futile. Nice. That one's down. Keep attacking those ones. Okay. What for, Cap? Um, probably disintegrate uh, Torsar if it mass. hits. Not a high chance, but if it does... <laughs> nah, if it does, it's an insta-kill. That's the thing. Uh, I'm going to try and get that Marauder. <sighs> Not necessarily a high chance, yeah. but we'll do it. I'll teach Failed. You. Oh, 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 hey, hey. Run back. Back to our car. Uh, knock him down. Our heavy shield's not going to do anything. We need to attack to our car. That's a nice bit of damage. I'm going to run. He's about to fall. Okay, Eddier. Anything we can do with him here? A uh, run and hit Torkar. Yeah. Yeah. We got him. Okay, so Eddier can now attack this one. Seraphin's still pretty much full on health. Uh, I'm gonna use. Uh, no, we're just gonna attack. Okay. Attack. Eddier, knock down if you can. Actually, Eddier, wall. Right. Wall. Kind of stuck over here. That's fine. Absolutely fine. Okay, our range is pretty good. <laughs> this is fine. Seraphin, uh, he needs a little bit more for pain block, which is what we're looking for next. Nice. Wait, he didn't get Show it because he didn't how hit. It's done. Nah, damn. <laughs> oh, we got this blasted by him. Okay, Seraphin have pain block? He does. Okay. Eddier. Very expulsion. Okay, now that should heal him if I remember right, right? Robust for 22 seconds. No, it just gives him, uh, no, it does give him health, right. Uh, that means that we can probably afford Back. to drop the wall after one more tick on this. Be seeing you soon. Okay. Though they are still right here. here. 
I'll that looks like it hurt. That, that's great for us where they're attacking. Knock them down. Ugh. Right, are we <laughs> to do this? That's Not fine. even close. Come on. We are still healing because of the pain block, which is nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, Eddie now needs to just ditch that. Wait. Dit huh? Show him yeah, okay, that was weird what it was done. doing there. Back in. We'll take a step back until they're on Eddie. Leave it to me. Right. In and start attacking. Eddie has no points at all. Uh, I'm going to switch him into warrior stance so that he can get a little bit more deflection. Better one, one on one. Yeah. There's something you don't see nice. every day. Reduced healing we're not too worried about. Because there's nothing. He's marked for the hunt, but it's also <laughs> melee versus a ranged character. <laughs> okay. Ooh. About as close as it could be, but <laughs> I think it worked. Yeah. I'll teach you a lesson. Probably our closest fight that we've won yet. Okay. Look at that. We'll grab our loot. Which appears to just be money, mostly, but that's okay. This guy, he just doesn't care. Watching. Ooh, we got Torque. We got the Maker's Own. Ability uh, upon becoming near uh, death grants Reforge the Flesh. So this user is paralyzed and then they heal and take less damage. Oh, interesting. There's Might and then Crush Armor Rating. That could be useful. Torkar's Head and Torkar's Map Fragment. This piece of tattered parchment uh, shows familiar waters and land masses of Deadfire Archipelago. Without the other pieces, it's impossible to tell where it points out to get there. A note is scribbled in the margins. I entrust this fragment to you, brilliant friend, with every confidence that you won't fail to safeguard it. Enjoy your riches on the appointed day. Yours in affection, Captain Henkwa. Mm, but we don't, right have the rest. we don't have the other parts of the map, so we can't do it. Obviously. Hmm. Interesting. I got this. Well, I ooh, got we also this. got more loot. I got this. Yeah, we. I, you got this. Right. Where are the barrels of rotten fish? Here? Hard tack. Did we already pick up the barrels of rotten fish? Entirely possible. Uh, I don't see any, necessarily. I guess means we probably already picked it up and I just didn't notice. Uh, if I check our journal for that quest. So that is the Iron Gut quest. I acquired the Rotten Hagfish. I have done right in stone. Okay, and then the last one I'm missing is the Fire Kelp Extract, which you get in King's Coffin. Okay. Give oh, me a real challenge. Get here? Oh, I never picked that up. Oh, yeah, of course not. Nice to that. see you too. The level up for Palagina. Interesting. She's level 12. Wait, is she the highest level? Yo, how did that happen? We are. Oh, no, she she's actually a whole level behind. Never mind. Athletics, uh, Intimidate, and here. I don't know. What do we want? Spell resistance seems pretty good, generally. Practiced healer? Actually, that's kind of how what she needs practiced healer, because she does that an awful lot. It's mostly self-healing, but she does it an awful lot. Get her some more of these. Uh, more things she can use. Estoc. Sure. That seems good. Right. And we need to rest. So I think I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.